The second century, Ptolemy wrote something called the Almagest, and basically what he did was he synthesized all this Greek and Arabic knowledge into one volume and tried to explain how the planets move around the Earth. And, and that's the key phrase, I guess, because that's what, he, what everyone believed, that the Earth was still in the universe, and everything, including the Sun, of course, went around us. And he used something called epicycles to try and explain the appearances of these planets. It didn't explain everything, there were still questions asked. Nevertheless, it became the accepted uh, philosophy, if you like. So here we're looking at uh, an, er an example of an early printed book. It was printed in 1476 in Venice. The author is Regimontanus. As I said, it's an, early, it's an example of early printing techniques, but it's also the, an example of the first steps that the Catholic Church took to rectify the Julian calendar. They, they certainly looked at uh, lunar and solar eclipses to try and formulate uh, a better calendar, because Easter, that movable feast, kept moving too far away from the Jewish Passover. This man here, Erasmus Reinhold, these Prutanic tables, as you can see, this is a 1585 edition. They were actually first published in about 1582, and his tables uh, were also used to devise the new calendar. Now, Erasmus Reinhold was professor of mathematics at the Wittenberg University, and as well as being uh, instrumental in devising the new Gregorian calendar, he owned and annotated our first edition, uh, Copernicus's De Revolutionibus from 1543. Now this is one of 276 extant copies of this book in the world. Uh, we know this because a retired professor, uh, Owen Gingrich, has made it part of his life work to track each copy down. And he's found from an original run of about 500 of these copies, there are over half in existence. Uh, as I say, 276, and he's catalogued each one of them. And it was he that um, determined that our copy was once owned and annotated by Erasmus Reinhold. And here's an example of some of the, the notes he's made in the margins. He doesn't make any uh, comments about Copernicus's uh, ideas of the heliocentric system, perhaps because he thought it was too controversial and indeed it was controversial. Now Tycho Brahe was a Danish astronomer and he was given a whole island called Ven by the Danish king. It belonged to Denmark at the time but now belongs to Sweden. Nevertheless, So on this island he built two observatories, built huge astronomical instruments uh, which he actually built and calibrated himself and with these instruments he observed and compiled a star chart of over a thousand stars and interestingly even though it was naked eye observations they actually stand up today for their accuracy. Kepler gets his hands on a whole amount of Tycho's data and alongside his own data which is a vast amount as well he puts, he puts all the data together and comes up with his three laws of planetary motion and in his third law of planetary motion uh, in the Harmonica Mundi here he's, try, he's trying to describe the movement of those planets uh, with a mathematical formula as in putting the movement uh, on a scale. So the notes on the scale are, are representing mathematically how a planet moves. Well, Kepler communicates with Galileo on the subject of the heliocentric system. Uh, they exchange a few letters. Galileo, however, in 1609 had uh, heard about the telescope, made, improved the design that he'd seen and looked through his telescope for the first time in 1609. So in 1610, he publishes exactly what he sees through a telescope, if you like. So he's, he's used his telescope, so well, I'll, I'll publish this. And it's called the Starry Messenger, as in the Sidrus Nuncius here. It says, this is the Starry Messenger, I'm Galileo. I've looked through my Perspicili, as in his telescopes. I've seen many wondrous things, including four moons of Jupiter. So Galileo, uh, Kepler, and even Tycho Brahe's hybrid uh, makeup of the universe and Copernicus are introducing a new physics uh, to astronomy, but bringing it all together and explaining why we don't fall off uh, the Earth, like Tycho uh, believed, is the first edition Principia by Isaac Newton, which was published in 1687. And here I believe that the universal laws of gravity are now set out, uh, a framework of calculus uh, used by the author, wholly original work by him, you know, the, the calculations, etc., are unique to Newton. This first edition, um, you see the imprimatur of Samuel Pepys. He gets a mention there because he was president of the Royal Society at the time. And imprimatur basically translates as uh, let it be printed. Okay, just to finish up then, Newton dies in 1727. Uh, He's buried in Westminster Abbey and Riesbrack uh, 
made a, a death mask of him and the Royal Society actually owned the original uh, death mask. The Victorians then went around much later making copies of many death masks and obviously they felt Newton was, at le was worth at least 44, ours is numbered 44 and uh, of a run of about 500, I believe, these were made. Plaster copies made to look like the original bronze. Uh, ours was owned by a Professor Wallace. He was Professor of Mathematics and Astronomy at Edinburgh University, and his daughters uh, kindly donated it to the observatory.